I love your background. It's a very nice, very nice, nice, nice cloudy uh, backdrop. Very nice. Uh, it's real. I'm outside. And it's a beautiful well, place. it's gorgeous and you're gorgeous. And I, honestly, let me just say, I'm such a huge fan and have been for a long time, which is why it was so exciting when I saw that you were going to be um, the star of Head Over Heels. Okay, let me get into this. <laughs> for, for everyone just tuning in. Now, I hope that you're, I hope that you're not one of those, um, one of those famous people who doesn't want to talk about their famous person and parent. Oh, because, I'm, I'm all for, I'm totally fine talking about it, believe me. Because no problem. I, your mother is Belinda Carlisle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That this is that that's that's important. <laughs> well, that's very sweet. Thank you. I, um, and I am in Head Over Heels right now at the Pasadena Playhouse, and the show is so amazing, largely in part to the fact that the music is so amazing, and you know uh, the Go Go's or just Go Go's. Is it the Go Go's or is it Go Go's? It's funny you say that. I still don't know either. But when they won the, um, when, when they got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it was the Go Go's, even mm -hmm. though I often, even their Facebook and like every, a lot of places I just see Go Go's. So who the hell knows? I mean, who the, the world who knows? But the truth is, the music is so amazing. And a lot of people know the hits, you know? I mean, we got the beat, but even getting into songs that I did before doing the musical, I'm like, the Go Go's were really onto some serious good shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's true. You're, I mean, you're right that you know they 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 only quote unquote had you know it's like four big like top you know, top I guess top ten hits. But in truth, you're right. I mean, so much of their catalog is just. They have some, they only had three albums, and so, or four albums, I think, three, four, four. But, um, but no, and actually, I wanted to ask you, I have a bunch of questions for you, but one of which was, you know, uh, what is your favorite song that you get to sing in the, in the entire musical, personally? Well, I got real lucky because I got cast as the queen of the kingdom, uh, um, and her name is Gynesia. You know, like like gynecologists, it's like, you know, um, Gynesia and Queen gets to sing in a trio. She gets to sing, "Heaven is a place on Earth." No, okay, I'm I'm spiraling because I can't find my nails. I literally sat with the intention of putting on my nails as I did this, and I thought they were. I, <laughs> Don't know where they are. Hold on. I'm going to keep talking. Heaven is <laughs> Earth is not a Go Go's song. Okay. Where the I put these nails? Uh, I'm so confused. Oh, <laughs> hold on. No problem. Take your time. I'm enjoying myself immensely. So the longer the better. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay, 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 okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Heaven is a Place on Earth is not a Go-Go song. It is a Belinda Carlisle song. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, my mom broke up with the Go-Go's in 85 and then had Mad About You, which, which is also in the musical, I, I, guess, I think, right? Because I went to the Broadway version, so and I'm going to, the, to your version on December 9th, so... I'm not sure how much of it is the same, or I've heard it's very different, but also, you know, obviously has some, uh, so I've heard it's amazing. I've heard your version is incredible, so I'm very excited, but I'm not sure how much of, this, of, of the two are the same, so I'm interested to, to hear. But they have Mad About, but my mom did Mad About You, and then she did Heaven Is A Place On Earth in 87, so. You're, I've also, because of being in this musical, it has caused me to become more of a Belinda Carlisle solo career fan because I've gotten into songs that I didn't really know about. I'm obsessed with Leave a Light On for me. 
<laughs> I want that song to, I want them to add it to the musical so I can. And that, you know, funnily enough, now that I think about it, it actually is a perfect song for a musical. It is. It has that kind of, you can imagine, like I can imagine you at the front of the stage, you know, going, leave a light on for me and looking up at the sky or, you know, looking like looking at your, thinking about your long lost lover, you know, I could totally see that. Circle in the sand. Also, I've been obsessed with for years. So good. Uh, All I'm doing is talking about your mom. <laughs> no, I, wa I just wanted to ask you, I mean, what has it been like? Because what I know you started on what, November 12th, somewhere around there. So, oh, wow, they look great. The Golden Girls are on them. And <laughs> They're amazing. Epic, really epic. Um, but like, what has it been like for you? I mean, have you enjoyed it? Like, what it, have you like, I know from my, when my mom did Hairspray on the West End, uh, like 10 years ago, but I remember like, even for people like you and her, who, you know, who tour and who perform, I mean, that's a unique challenge, I, I can imagine. Like, what is it? What has it been like for you? Well, I studied theater, in, which was, it's been 72 years since I was in college. It's been a very long time. And I love theater. I love everything about it. I love rehearsals. I love theaters. I love that anything possible, that the show becomes a thing that is so important. And then at the end, you take it down and you put it away and it's done. I love everything about it. I think it's magic. Doing a musical now in my life, I realize like how difficult it is to do musical theater. It's really, really hard. The discipline that it takes on everybody's part. And like, thank God the cast has been so awesome. Our co-directors have been so amazing. And um, I mean, just, it's hard. It's hard as fuck. <laughs> Singing harmonies? Let me tell you. I'm a drag queen. I show up and I sing whatever comes out of my mouth. And then, you know, other people can sing around me. But doing this, I'm part of a team. And if I sing the thing, it's going to throw off that person and it's going to throw off that person. So, like, I had to, like really learn how to like do music. <laughs> now, hey, you know what? I, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. Like how many performances are you doing per week? Is it, fi is it five days a week that you're doing or, or have been doing? I think it's, I mean, so far it's been like, it's been six shows a week and I'm gonna be doing seven this week and I might be doing eight at oh some point. God. <laughs> Ugh, I can't even imagine. It's but. like Merman, Ethel Merman once said, you want to do a theater? You want to do a comedy? You have to live like a fucking nut. And you do. <laughs> About the theater. Well, so wait, it runs till December 10th, right, or 12th. So like a month long run, right? I yeah. mean, I don't know how you do it because I mean, you know, I think you and Trixie Mattel are the two, I'm not exaggerating. Who? The two I don't know. <laughs> I've heard of her. I think you and Trixie are literally, the, I'm not exaggerating, the two busiest people I've ever met. I mean, I don't know how you do it because I was, I mean, obviously I follow you and I know a lot about what you're doing, but between the podcast, which congratulations, by the way, what a huge success it is. And I mean, and the network, podcast network. But the fact that in the midst of doing the show, you also have a new album coming out you have a tour coming up. You have a book that just came out, uh, what, less than a month ago. I mean, it's just, I don't even know what to say. I don't know, how, how, do, how do you do it? Well, I mean, I, uh, yeah. Why did we decide to do everything in the span of this one, <laughs> this one month? I don't know, and it's a question I keep asking myself, but yes, it has been a really um, busy and fruitful um time and this has been the um this has been one of the fruits of that of this time period um 
and I'm very proud of it. And I'm also, I'm most proud of the fact that it can do a costume change. So like, you know that um, I'm known for wearing garbage bags. So we did as a reveal. It's I. <laughs> that is amazing. I mean, uh, incredible. Let me do it. They wouldn't let me look, make the book look like this. They were like, it has to be bright colors. It has to stand out. It has to stand out on the rack. But I, I love that. I love the reveal. I love that. Like in the, on the surface, it's very. It is very. You know, right. very. What's the word? Fruity or fruitful or whatever word you want to use. Very bright and sunny and fruity and whatever colorful. But then, you know, it's a. You know what though? I don't know if you know this. My mom, um, and she actually just recreated the look for the first time not too long ago. My mom used to wear trash bag dresses back in the punk days in I L.A. Uh, and I was like, my God, uh, we are, I am where she is me. Uh, You're both trash bag uh, dress uh, uh, pioneers. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's gorgeous. The book is, is the book is beautiful. And what, like, how long did it take you to write? I mean, what was that whole process like? Why, why did you decide to do it? Because you're still what? You're only in your what, 30s? Am I right? I think it's early 30s. I don't know the hospital where I was born, but I can't prove how old I am. I have no idea. Um, I know I shouldn't ask a lady how old she is, but um, but uh, but no, I mean, like, why? Because you're so young. I mean, why did you decide that this was the right moment to tell your story? Well, it was like, I really, I really was able to, I could have made it any that I wanted. We could we could have filled it with a bunch of pictures, of five words total. Fine, but I was like, I don't. I, I like writing. I've always been a writer, so I wanted to. Like, I really wanted to write it. And we were like, why don't we just do life story up until this point and see what? And it turned out to be really, um, really it was a therapy session. Took you know years to do it at this point, and going back, hashing the most horrible time of your life. Oh, it's a blast! <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> well, no, but you do have an, an an amazing story. I mean, part of you know, part of for me. I mean, you know, I always say, you know, it's like it's one of my sayings is, you know, if you don't, I. I we, you know, the people, those of us who choose, and you, you certainly have, have chosen to live a life, not, you haven't taken the easy route, you've, you've, you've you know, had the courage to go and just go for it, and even if it's the less, you know, easy, more difficult path, but like, that's what life's about, you know, and, and you really, you're the ultimate example of somebody who, I think, you know, chose in some ways the most difficult path, but, you know, you've, you persevered through it, and you've, you know, you've basically obliterated every obstacle that was put in front of you. But, you know, I mean, yeah, was that was that part of it that you know, you felt like you wanted to sort of, you know, do a therapeutic thing and get and sort of sort of you reckon with the last you know, with that with some of the more difficult parts of, of your life? Yeah, definitely. And I mean, uh, <laughs> it's why because it's why you say, oh, it was a difficult path. And, it, and it, was, it was, but I definitely was motivated not by, I, I guess I was motivated by like, and, and my in inclination to do drag. Because I, I talked about all this in the book. I moved out to Los Angeles to be an actor. And to be like, and then I realized the amount of work and discipline that it takes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't think I can hear you. I think your audio went out. Maybe is that just me? Hello. Oh, can now you you're good. You're back. And oh. that story. No. 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 <laughs> the meaning of life. Um, what was, were you writing the album 
during the time you were also writing the book? Uh, yeah, well, we were still working on the book. Um, but a lot of the book was written during pandemica times. Mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, that was definitely a time where a lot of people were forced to take a break from whatever their life was and take a look at what's going on and what's important. And so, I mean, that, that, was, um, that was when I did a lot of the writing. And then after that, we started really writing in earnest the music for the next album. And what was that process like? Um, I mean, you're an amazing writer. And I mean, I have to say, one of the things that I find so interesting is how, like, how versatile you are and as an artist and how, I mean, yeah, but like the fact that WOW is so different than anything you've ever, or at least, you know, certainly different than anything else on the album. Um, and I just find it amazing how in one album you can have so many different, you're not afraid because sometimes artists are like, an album has to be, you know, they, all the sound, songs have to sound the same, you know, but in fact, I mean, you're not, you weren't afraid to like go in a bunch of different directions and sort of put that all into one, into one album. Yeah, very that because it's like because we're doing a checklist of all the all the sounds and feelings of songs from like the nineties to the very early two. Mm -hmm. So we, we got a piece of bass sounding to have so we have a song like Wow, that's like an angry pop punk kind of song. Um and check them all off the list. So yeah, it's all the each song takes you on a completely different. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite song that uh, that you wrote on the album, or that you perform on the album? Do you write every single song? I wrote them with people. Yeah, right. Uh, what is my favorite? Song? I mean, God, it's so hard to choose. Um, I feel like my favorite song. Say that one more time. My favorite song isn't even out yet. Oh, oh, okay, right. Because there's only four tracks, five tracks out so far. Um, <laughs> and and how like what? I mean, I I sort of got. I actually looked for this information. When is the? Do you know when the album is going to be released yet? Is there I, a date? I you don't. don't know. Maybe someone does in an office. Well, because I was looking, I was like, oh, I should know when the release date is, but I but I couldn't find I, it. <laughs> okay, so it's not like so it's not it's not an imminent release. It could it could be a month from now or you know in the well uh, whenever won't be a month from now, but it's definitely going to happen next year. Next like, year, okay, got it, got it. Full of next year. But it's cool that even if the songs released so far, I mean, you, you like you couldn't get more different from Wow and XOXO Y2K. They're totally different songs. And, uh, but I think that's great. And I find it, you know, another way in which you and, and Trixie are similar, and I think maybe you're, you're the only two, and literally, that do this, is, you know, you, yes, you have your drag personas, but you also have both been really effective at sort of doing your own thing and branching out of the traditional constraints of what a drag queen is supposed to be. and. Um, like when you did the video for Wow, were you afraid or not afraid? Were you, were you, did it feel like sort of new territory? Like doing, like literally stepping completely sort of out of your, of your traditional persona. Was that a decision you had to make? Yeah, that was the scariest music video I've ever done. I've done some crazy, weird in my, in my career and life. But oh, it was it was because there was nothing. It was like going into a battlefield without a suit of armor on. It was very there's no there's no makeup or hair. There's no fucking there's no Joanne hat and sunglasses. I find like there's no it doesn't that it was very bare and very raw. And I worked with um Eddie and his band The Disciples. And I was very much like, they did it as a favor to me. Like, went to one of their shows and there were people there who were watching them jam out and like do their thing. 
And then I was like, hi, I'm going to lip sync to this song that is that no one has heard yet. It, it, it was like really scary, wild. And, um, but I'm, you know, happy with how it turned out and um, it's cute. No, it's, it, it's awesome. It's awesome. Um, and, uh, and I'm excited for the tour, which starts in January. Is that right? Um, and you have thir over 30 dates. That's, that's, that's quite a tour. I know. We're going to be like on a bus for like two months, going around North America, doing um, this show. And the show is starting to come together. And I, I really want to like, I want it to kind of be like, I don't want to way too much, but it's so, I wanted to tell a story, like have a line, like a story. Um, uh, and I want it to be, it starts in like outer space and that goes from there. So like the music takes you on a journey like through time. So like the show is gonna take you on a journey through space. Mm -hmm. So you already have a, you definitely already have a, a big uh, concept in mind. <laughs> I yeah. can't wait. It's all oh my God. I cannot wait. It's gonna be amazing. Um, no, I mean, I, I just don't, I just still can't get over how you have the tour, nationwide tour, the album coming out, the memoir. And yeah, I mean, we're just come back for a minute to the, to the show. Do you think that doing more musical, like theater type uh, performances is something that you want to do in the future? Are you, are you, are you happy after this experience? Um, yeah, I actually really um, and it's like I I love traveling and like, and I love doing drag and it's weird doing uh, doing the same thing. but the audience is different every night and it's very like alive and and I get to be part of this like family with the the cast with the crew and the, everybody at Pasadena Playhouse like it it makes me very happy to do the and I love it very much. So yeah, yeah, I'll play Lady Macbeth. <laughs> <laughs> that honestly, actually, would be so brilliant. And I mean, can you imagine like how huge that would be? On I mean, like on stage. I mean, you do like just like like an acid trip. I mean, that actually would be would be a totally epic and amazing. I would not cast me as Lady Macbeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but in that you know in do like more traditional, you know, Shakespeare, like, but like an acid trip version, like Shakespeare, you know, kind of, I mean, look, kind of what they did in a way with Head Over Heels, you know, I don't know if you ever saw the original incarnation, but from what I've heard, it's a totally different, this version is a very different experience. Well, <laughs> talking about like the very first time they did it, which. Like, oh, right. Well, good point. I know that there, there, there was Oregon, San Francisco, New or York. I only saw New York. I've only seen New York or Broadway. Yeah. I saw New York too. I loved it. I had a great time. Our production is very different. Our production is like um, much, it's it's not two acts. It's much better. It's, um, and it's very, uh, it's a fucking party. <laughs> well, I'm, I cannot fucking wait. December 9th, I'll be there. So I'm, uh, I'm so excited to see it. And, um, and th I mean, honestly, thank you for, for doing it because I think the, you, know, you, you're helping to give the, the musical, um, you know, a second, a second chance because it really was, you know, the thing is, I think it was just in a good way. It was just so crazy and so different from anything else that, you know, that had ever really been done. So I think people were a little, even Broadway, even though theater is a little more liberal and sort of open-minded than, than film and TV, I think even it was just so out there that I think people weren't quite ready for it, maybe. But I think, you know, you guys, from what I've heard, people are much more, or there's, I mean, don't get me wrong. The last version was great. I loved it. But this version, I think um, you guys have really given it a uh, second win. So thank you. I have a question for you. Uh-huh. Um, do, do you, do you, why did you get your, like, your roundup? Spotify? Say that one more time. Did, did you get your like year long roundup on Spotify? I like, did. Yeah. Who are your like, <laughs> do you want to 
Eric. It's actually really funny that, uh, that so because I put up on my roundup, I put the Kygo. I re I took a screenshot of the Kygo was my number one artist, and some uh -huh. people actually responded, which I didn't even think of. People wrote back to me, were like, "Hello, like, have well, how about what happened to your mom? Like, where's your mom?" And I'm like, "Well, I do." I, do, I think there were two of her songs that were in the top five. So, oh. Which song? Uh, so I do listen to I do listen to the my mom, my mom and the Go Go's. But I also, you know, I don't want to be that guy who's always like, oh, I'm just, you know, it's like, oh, what are you listening to? Oh, I'm listening to my mom. She's in the Go Go's. You know, like, you know, I do listen to other. I do, although I do like what I do, do what I do do what I do listen to is a lot of 80s pop, like even outside of the Go-Go's. I love New Wave, you know, so, um, so and I, I'm not even connected to my mom. Like, I, I think I just, for whatever reason, developed my own, like, um, love. I mean, there were bands that she hates that I listen to that are from that same era. Like, um, I won't name them, but, you know, there's some bands where she's like, oh, they're terrible. And I'm like, what? They were like contemporaries of yours back in the 80s. And she's like, Oh, they're 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 not my they're not my kind of music. I'm like, well, that's oh, last question for you. I don't want to keep you too long, but out of curiosity, what are your favorite not not just your favorite artists, but what were your, some of your biggest influences um, when you were, you know, coming of age as an artist? Well, I mean, on my Spotify, like top my top artist is Patti LaBelle. Uh, which I didn't. I guess I do listen to a ridiculous amount of that as well. I find her extremely soothing. I think I think she's one of the best vocalists in the history of like Earth. She, I'm I'm obsessed with Patti LaBelle. And Patti LaBelle's music is very different from the type of music that I do. Like I wasn't in my own top five or top ten. <laughs> Nick was like, oh. and I'm like, I don't sit around <laughs> listening to your own music. Think yeah. day. I don't, I mean, you know, I love my music. I think it's great. But when I come home from a long night of, you know, of doing drag, I want to listen to Patti LaBelle sing about love and shit. Um, but as far as like influences, like, as, and like music, like, oh my gosh, I first tape was Ace of Base, the sign imprinted on me, like, like it's part of me, those symbols and that sound. And I, I think that, and that informed like the latest music that, but like all of my music, I like ass music that. <laughs> Like I like I like that sound. I like mm -hmm. growing, like you know. the connection's kind of going out again. Oh, the 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 audio. <laughs> <laughs> we just we just go like this. I think you're back. Actually, maybe no, no, you're not back. Oh, oh, you're back. You're back. <laughs> anyway, but and we're wrapping up soon. Anyway, but I I uh, I'm so grateful for to you for taking the time and. Uh, if, and I hope I get to see you, if not on the ninth, because I'm sure you're going to be after the show, probably, you know, ready to collapse. But um, if I don't see you after the show, then I'll see you, um, I'm sure, at some point soon. And uh, I know my mom would love to meet you finally. So, you know, we're going to make that happen. You bringing your mom? I, the thing is, my parents are in Mexico City. That's where they live, actually. And because of the Go Go's rehearsals, I don't. They were. So the original plan was she was I was gonna go with my parents, and then they and then they my, we made plans for that, and then they were like my mom was like I don't think I can make make it into town in time um, because she's like the she has rehearsals for that anyway it's just a big mess schedule wise but I'm gonna make it in time so on her behalf glad you will be there and I can't wait to you know person and it's been really nice talking to you and thank you for inviting me to do this. Of course, and everybody, please go see Alaska, Head Over Heels, Pasadena Playhouse through December 10th or 12th, I think. The new album, new memoir, podcast, she's just, you're amazing. So thank you so, so much. <laughs>
<laughs> well, someone said, I see the eyebrows, uh, even with your... <laughs> I have a show tonight, and I only got half my face done, so... You still, you look amazing. You really do. <laughs> you always, always. It's been amazing talking to you. See you soon. Good luck. Congrats on everything, and uh, lots of love. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.